welcome to Watch Symposium. I'm Austin on the way to Nakano Broadway where most of the watch shops are. You go through this arcade. On the left, there's a watch shop, Swiss watch. We're going to check it out. Rainbow Daytonas, they buy them. So if you have a few lying around, you can go there. A $50,000 plus Patek Philippe travel time. I think this is the smaller one as opposed to the bigger version. Here's a premium laden Nautilus. And uh, of course, this is a Gerald Genta design. And uh, I think the white one, blue one, green one might be a little bit more desirable, but uh, that's not my bag. These are uh, Patek Philippe's. We're getting to the Rolexes, but this is a Patek Philippe precious metal chronograph. It's got a diamond bezel on a strap of some sort. It's 150,000 USD plus. So the price of a modest house or a small apartment. I'd rather have the house. Here's a clock, AP clock. It doesn't seem to be running, so it must not be a quartz, probably a manual wind. Here's another AP. Um, you know, some people like this sort of big, uh, ostentatious, you know, wrist presence kind of watch. Certainly the watch for someone that wants their watch to be noticed, who wants something kind of obvious, now, when it comes to this watch, I actually like the pattern on the dial. It's kind of interesting. It reminds me of a grenade. If it doesn't have a nickname, there you go. Speaking of nicknames, the James Cameron, the JC. Beautiful blue gradient dial. And here's a red 43 millimeter Sea Dweller. I would probably go for the James Cameron because of that dial. But it's a huge watch. And Sermit. There's a Sermit. You can see that. All of the serial numbers are hidden by that sticker on the dial, obviously to protect where these watches originated from so uh, the flippers don't get busted. A Yacht Master, interesting bezel. Not sure how I feel about it. This is a precious metal piece. It certainly doesn't look like a precious metal piece, so stealth wealth. So Yacht Master to Yacht Master 2. You used to be able to find this watch everywhere. Just about every AD you would go to, you'd find this this watch and you can't find it anymore. And I always wonder if it's gonna be discontinued. It's a really kind of a cool watch with a questionable complication. This is a Meteorite GMT, white gold. This is one of about, I wanna say seven or eight I encountered when checking out watches. And you can see the dial there. A lot of people complain about the legibility of this dial. I don't think it's too bad. This is another example of stealth wealth perhaps. I mean, the dial is a little bit flashy, but it looks like a steel piece. But the people that know will know it's a very special Rolex. And uh, you got to wonder when they're going to discontinue this. I mean, that's a limited quantity of, of that dial material. And I don't think you can buy it anymore. Meaning I don't think you can, as a company, buy and uh, produce dials out of the Gibeon meteorite, which is what that was made from. Here's, uh, in comparison, a, a humble steel Pepsi on the... Jubilee bracelet. I think this looks a little bit better, but not nearly as cool an F off as something from space. Here is uh, one of my least favorite Milgauss swatches. It's got the green glass, but those 369 orange uh, indices did a live show uh, about that actually today and uh, about this one as well. You know, Paul Thorpe apparently. Uh, believes this is going to be discontinued. I don't believe it. What would they do with that uh, green glass they're so proud of? But we'll see. The Milgauss along with the Air King are almost certainly the next two Rolex watches that are going to see a change or maybe a discontinuation. We don't know. Now, this was recently changed. This is the older version. The one to the right is the newer version. Aesthetically almost identical, totally identical. Well, except for that little crown of the six on the white one. This the hands changed just a little bit. So just an upgrade when it comes to the movement, going from the 31 to the 32 movement, as was the case with this, but this had a big change aesthetically. It went from 39 to 36. This is a 36 millimeter Explorer. They returned to the older size. And here, the first time seeing it is the two-tone version. The only two-tone Rolex without a date not a fan of this watch. I think it looks a little bit effeminate. Definitely the one on the left would be the one I would be going for. When it comes to those discontinued 39 millimeter Explorers, they wrote Explore at the bottom of the dial and they've returned it up to the top. I think that looks a lot better. Case in point, this 39 millimeter Explorer, you can see Explore is written below the hand stack. And this is a Mark II dial. 
from a famously minimalist Rolex to their most complicated piece, the Sky Dweller. You've got the month, the GMT function, the date. You've got the command bezel, the 9001 movement. And you can access all those functions just through that command bezel and the crown. And that's what's really so cool about that watch. The one on the left, by the way, had the oyster bracelet that has the Jubilee bracelet, another oyster bracelet. This is a little cheaper because it's got the black dial. But again, that command bezel makes it so you don't have all these crowns and buttons on the side of the case of the watch. And speaking of buttons and specifically ones that you screw down like the crown, you've got the Cosmograph. Nobody calls this Cosmograph. They always call it the Daytona. All right, that's a new thing. Cosmograph from now on. You can see the crazy premium on the white dial, much more than the black dial. You can see they're on sale, but you can't get that duty-free price. So no 10% discount for you tourists. That's what the double prices are, by the way. If you're wondering, the cheaper prices without tax, the 10% sales tax, if you're a tourist, you don't have to pay that if you have your passport with you. Precious metal, Daytona. Oh, Cosmograph, I mean, on a Oysterflex bracelet with a sun dust dial. Quite an increase in price, but I really prefer the bracelet. When it comes to these really expensive pieces, the difference between the tax-free and the tax-included price can be massive. I mean, you're talking like, you know, just an extra date just. But not this date just. Somebody's thinking about this one. That someone would not be me. This is a 41 millimeter date just. I prefer the 36 millimeters. I don't like diamonds. I'm more of a smooth bezel kind of guy. But the Jubilee bracelet's nice. And that's all the Rolex watches they had. This shop mainly deals in modern Rolex pieces. So everything was six digit. They had a few discontinued pieces, but uh, no five digit pieces, no pre-ceramic pieces. Now, here are some Omega Speedmasters. I gotta say, that's a beautiful box. Omega does boxes much better than Rolex. Those green sort of plasticky boxes are really, really unattractive, but uh, maybe trees aren't dying for them. So could be a good thing. But you can tell Omega's put more effort into their boxes, and that's appreciated. I mean, it adds to the experience. You can't wear a box, and they're kind of a pain in the ass to store. But, uh, yeah, Rolex needs to up their game. Yes, if they had better boxes, maybe less people would turn down GMTs and subs at the authorized dealers. Guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what watch you liked. For me, it was probably that BLRO GMT Master 2 Pepsi or that blue dialed Milgauss.